welcome. If you guys are looking at me and you don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about and you haven't been to one of these before, I encourage you, if you have the next hour free, to come and sit and join us for the final round of UTA Library's Pitch of the Week contest. This is where we welcome three teams competing for today, competing for the grand prize and winning title of Pitch of the Week. Our teams will be given, oh, and our teams are, so sorry, glossed over that, the Leaf Peepers, the Fearless Scarecrows, and the Common Pheasants. Let's give them a round of applause. We like to applaud here. It's all about the applause. Okay, Lady Gaga said it. I'm going to say it over and over again, <laughs> along with Yas Queen. So get that in your head, and you're going to join me in saying that eventually. I'm going to make ya. All right, so our teams will be given a random prompt and 20 minutes to devise a pitch based on the prompt. You guys already know how this goes. It can be an idea for an invention, a product or a service, a solution to a pressing problem, or anything else that speaks to the prompt. It doesn't need to be feasible or practical. As long as you stick to the prompt, it does not matter how risky, ridiculous, fictional, or imaginary you get. I like to say, it's okay to get weird. Get weird, UTA. That's what, don't they say that about Austin? Keep it weird, Austin keeping it weird? Keep it weird, Arlington. All right. So our teams will be judged by our lovely judges here who I will introduce separately later on in the program. Uh, they will be judged on their teamwork, communication, and creative thinking. Teams can use the internet to help brainstorm, and you will deliver your pitch using PowerPoint or any other method that you choose. Google Slides, Prezi, the old-fashioned stand and speak, your words and your ideas, who'd have thunk? You can do any or all of the above. Now our beautiful whiteboard over here has all of the information you might need. Are we on Facebook Live today? Hey, Facebook. Hey, live. All right, so this is our live stream for Facebook, you guys. I love Facebook Live. This is the only time I've ever done it. <laughs> this is my Facebook Live step touch. And here is the URL for it, facebook.com slash UTA libraries. And then once this video is complete, it will be archived on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash UTA library. Also, all of our other episodes are at that link. And then if you want to vote, and we hope you do, those of you sitting here and those of you watching at home or wherever you're watching from, you can vote at libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. And have we gotten the anomaly fixed on that? We're trying a new format. Okay, so we had a little, we had some inflated numbers last time. So as the rules go, if we have a tie amongst our judges, the audience poll will determine the winner. All right. Oh, and also, we, do we have our hashtag up here? Yes. So if you want to tweet or post on Instagram or whatever social media platform you prefer, please use the hashtag POWUTA so we can keep track of that and uh, know that you're out there watching. Pow UTA. All right. Now, here comes the fun part. I wrote that. <laughs> we are going to now come up with our pitch. Each deck on these tables have a discipline, an equipment, and a material deck. And we're going to have our team members pull one card from the deck, and that will devise what our pitch ends up being, or a prompt ends up being. Okay, so let's do it. Y'all, do you want to pick from the top or somewhere in the middle? Let's do it random. All right, this is exciting. I love it. Our discipline is journalism. And trusting. Discipline is journalism. Very broad, very important, very now. All right, now our equipment <laughs> is drone. Cool. The equipment is drone. And oh, our material is vinyl sheets. Okay, okay, pitch of the week, okay. 
journalism, drone, and vinyl sheets. The, huh? You got it. Yeah. That is what you have to come up with. So now you're going to get 20 minutes to come up with your pitch. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? You already kind of know the drill. You have that advantage. All right. So the timer's going to be over here on the screen. Let's get going. Fun and exciting times. Okay. I'm going to introduce our individual team members as they work. And then we'll go into a little bit of trivia that's amongst the theme of each name of our, of our teams. We've actually already done trivia of the names, so now it's just, I mean, I, I think it's fun. It's, it's going to be like, were you watching? You guys, some of you were here the first week, so we'll see if you remember anything. I remember Sunday got one of them, right? Yeah, you did. And we have candy today. All right, so from team one, the Leaf Peepers, Cam Wen is a senior computer science major. And Samir Ingavale is a senior business management major who minors in entrepreneurship. And Nathan Sunquist is a senior economics major who minors in business administration. Let's give them a round of applause, the Leaf Peepers. Thank you. All right. So I want to say, before we get into this trivia, you are encouraged to Google the answers on whatever device is in front of you, because some of these are random with a capital R. All right? Okay, first Leaf Peeper trivia. For those of you who have been paying attention to the preliminary rounds, what was the theme used for team names and trivia on the first week? Oh, for all three, yes. What was the theme? Can anybody think it, that has been paying attention to at least one? of our preliminary rounds? I think I heard the right answer. Did you say it, Asami? Yes, fall, autumn. That is correct. You get some candy. Yay, candy, yes, candy. What word was commonly used before the 16th century to refer to the autumn season? Anyone? This one's pretty easy. What word was commonly used before the 16th century to refer to the autumn season? It's also a term used, it's a medical term, a surgical term used. Postmortem, actually. Anyone? Facebook, if you're watching, you can comment. I can't give you candy, but. I can yass you. Anyone? All right. The answer is harvest. Harvest is the correct answer. Okay. What English romantic poet wrote the poem To Autumn, which describes the season as a time of mellow fruitfulness, but also evokes a sense of melancholy? I, I don't know, I needed to use that um, accent, a little bit of a accent and facial expression. Did you have the answer? Huh? Yes, ma'am, indeed. What English romantic poet wrote the poem To Autumn, which describes the season as a time of mellow fruitfulness, but also evokes a sense of melancholy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Google. <laughs> Get some candy. That is correct. The correct answer is John Keats. Okay, last trivia question for the leaf peepers. In the northern hemisphere, autumn begins in September. When does it begin in the southern hemisphere? Tricky question. I will repeat. In the Northern Hemisphere, autumn begins in September. When does it begin in the Southern Hemisphere? March. Yes, March is the correct answer. Good job. Keep calm and graduate. <laughs> when are you graduating? 
All right, all right. You got a little ways to go, but that's okay. You're going to keep calm that whole time, right? Yeah. What's your major? Architectural engineering. Yes. I love it. Architectural engineering major graduating in 2019. What's your name? Juliana. Juliana. Thank you for answering correctly. And I didn't get your name. Trania. One more time. Trania. Trania. All right. Nice to meet you, ladies. Thank you for participating. Please continue to do so. Okay, team number two is our fearless scarecrows. Div Sharma here in the middle is a junior computer science major who minors in mathematics. Whitney Adindu is a sophomore nursing major. And Subrat Paraduli is a sophomore electrical engineering major who minors in sustainable engineering. They are hard at work. Give them a round of applause. Come on. Yes. They are fearless scarecrows. All right, Fearless Scarecrow's Trivia. A phrase I never thought I'd say. In what autumn movie can you see, oh, this is a good one. Can you see Richard Gere and Winona Ryder walking through a beautiful fall foliage? Did somebody say it? Did you say it? In what? Did you say it, Asami? Yeah, <laughs> you knew it. Let's see if anybody else knows it. If not, yes. Autumn in New York. Yes, I appreciate that baritone voice. Thank you very much. Autumn in New York is the correct answer. What is your name, sir? Jared. Jared. Hello, nice to meet you. What's your major? Broadcasting. Oh, that makes sense. Broadcasting major. What year are you? Second sophomore, awesome. Thank you so much. Please continue to participate and answer if you know the answers. Maybe you can um, host Pal sometime with that baritone voice. All right. What English novelist and poet, best known for her book, Wuthering Heights, wrote a poem containing the verses, every leaf speaks bliss to me, fluttering from the autumn tree. Which one? Right, one? Emily Bronte. Emily Bronte, correct. Tell me your name, sir. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy, are you affiliated with UTA? Are you a faculty member? Student? Staff. Where do you work? College of Engineering. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. Please, can, I mean, if you know the answers, you have to do like a bevel like that next time. Stand up and do it. All right. The correct answer was Emily Bronte. Also published under the pen, pen name Ellis Bell. Which of these birds do not migrate in autumn? Hummingbirds, ravens, storks, or swallows? Which of these birds do not migrate in autumn? Hummingbirds, ravens, storks, or swallows? Anyone? I feel like I heard the answer but maybe I'm just hearing things. Yes, over here, correct answer. Ravens is the correct answer. Ravens do not migrate in autumn. All right, last trivia question for the fearless scarecrows. What is the name of the popular harvest festival celebrated in China close to the autumnal equinox? Yes, indeed it is, Han. Yay. Moon Festival. The Moon Festival, indeed. That is the correct answer. Fun, 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 till the daddy takes the T-bird away. All right, we got 11 minutes and 21 seconds left. Just going to give you guys a little time check. 11 minutes, guys. Team three is our the common pheasants. Here on the left, Haley Phillips is a freshman biology major who minors in biochemistry. Mehul Jain is a junior computer science major who minors in mathematics. And Rahul Dwivedi is a sophomore mathematics major who minors in business. Give them a round of applause. Yes, the common pheasants. Don't be offended by the common part. It's just a random team name. You're nothing, nothing like common folk. Whatever. 
All right. Common pheasants trivia. Ooh. Approximately how many apples does it take to make one gallon of apple cider? That's a good one. I wouldn't have known that. Approximately how many apples does it take to make one gallon of apple cider? Anyone want to take a guess? I wouldn't really know how to guess this. I have no frame of reference for apple cider making. How many apples does it take to make one gallon of apple cider? What did you say? 42 and you said? You both said 42? That's very close, it's approximately 40. Let's get some candy over here. Approximately 40. Apples, and the answer over here was 42. Well done. What is the top apple producing state in the US? But you said Washington? Yes, that's, that's a pretty easy one. But it's good to have easy ones in there. Washington, which harvests approximately 133 million crates per year of apples. I love an apple. You know the old saying, apple a day keeps the dock away. It's not really true, but they're good for you. Which of these is not a fall birthstone? Sapphire, opal, bloodstone, or yellow topaz? Y your answer is yellow topaz? Um, that is not correct. You said bloodstone? That is correct. I don't even know what bloodstone is. Bl bloodstone is not the birthstone for March. That's... Oh, there's two. March is my birth month. And I always thought aquamarine. And bloodstone? I need to Google this, Facebook. Give, shoot me a link in the video comments of a bloodstone image. Go. I bet Kyle Pinkus will do it. All right. Yeah, so bloodstone is the birthstone for March. Sapphire is September. Opal is October. And yellow topaz is November, which we are in the last day of today. All right. On which day of the week is the last day of fall in 2017? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> On which day of the week is the last day of fall in 2017? Which day of the week is the last day of fall in 2017? What'd you say? Thursday is not correct. But thank you for trying. It is not Friday, the last day of fall in 2017. Not like the last day of the fall semester, but the last day of fall. Hmm? Well, okay, so she's saying Google says Thursday, December 21st, but we have Wednesday, December 20th. Either way, you can still have some candy, because that was, that was some good Googling. Oh, all right. So Martin says it's actually 2 or 3 in the morning, so she really is technically right. So I really should have said Thursday, December 21st on here. It's all right. You've got a lot on your plate now. That's fine. It is a trick question. All right, all right, all right. We got 6 minutes and 15 seconds left, you guys. I see some PPT access, some Googling is still happening. Ooh, CNN images, journalism. All right. I'm going to introduce our judges now. The trivia portion is over. I know you're sad, but all good things must come to an end. Here in the middle of our judges table, we have Alexis Wen, who is an entrepreneur and a startup evangelist. Her background is in marketing and market research, 
and she is a UTA alumni. Let's give her a round of applause. Welcome, Alexis. Thank you. She was a judge with us uh, in last April, correct? We love repeat visitors, both contestants and judges. All right. I oh, I didn't confirm whether I could say your last name correctly, so let's see how it goes. Tony Rutiliano. Did I say it right? Rutiliano. All right. <laughs> Tony is an aspiring entrepreneur. After serving six years as the president and CEO of the Downtown Arlington Management Corporation, Tony felt compelled, drank his own Kool-Aid, to start a business of his own. Very soon, he will open Urban Alchemy, the first coffee and wine bar in Arlington. Give me a start date. I'll be there. And is developing a consulting practice to help cities, landowners, developers, entrepreneurs, and community stakeholders create vibrant places and build thriving organizations. That's awesome. Let's give Tony a round of applause. Thank you for being here today. And over here, Michelle Reed is UTA Library's open education librarian. She leads efforts to support the adoption, adaptation, and creation of open educational resources and advocates for the creation of experiential learning opportunities that foster collaboration, increase engagement, and empower students as content creators. She is a presenter for the Open Textbook Network and the 2016 recipient of the American Library Association's Carol Preston Baber? Baber? We don't know. <laughs> Sorry, ALA research grant for a project that explores undergraduate perspectives on open access and copyright and is 2017-18 OER research fellow. She's also a peer advisor for the 2017-18 SPARC Open Education Leadership Program. And SPARC stands for what? Oh, but you were, you were talking about the SPARC conference, right? What does it stand? Google, what is SPARC? Scholar, scholarly Publishing, okay, coalition-ness. It's, it's good stuff. It's, it's, OE, it's along the whole OER, Skullcom, Publishing, Open Access. Yeah, open, open, open. Open, open, open. Did you guys remember that commercial? Uh, you just, people in the know, no. All right, let's give Michelle Reed a round of applause. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, judges. I've, I've gotten just almost fully out of the habit of saying judges in a British accent because of So You Think You Can Dance and Kat Dealey. Because she always goes, yo, judges. And it's <laughs> actually really obnoxious to me. Sorry, Kat. I know you're watching. But <laughs> it was just like a tinge in there and I had to talk about it. So there we go. Two minutes and 36 seconds left. Oh, we have a little bit of time for Asami. You want to come talk about the Startup Lounge? Let's welcome Asami Nagakora to the front of the room. She has been serving popcorn and soda, but she does so much more for UTA, and she's going to tell you about it. Let me wipe my lips, stick off. Hi, everyone. My name is Asami, and I work at a place called Startup Lounge. I'm a coordinator there. And we have seminars and workshops, as well as providing spaces for entrepreneurs. You don't have to be a student or faculty staff to be there. Uh, anyone's welcome. And we just wrapped up uh, this seasons of uh, the weekly seminars yesterday, but we'll have another sets of seminars coming up next semester. Um, so we'll keep you posted. Awesome. How did the head shop? headshot workshop go well i had my picture taken so i'll be updating my photo for linkedin <laughs> yes. did you give me like over the shoulder glam shot realness no all right but just professional shop for 20 dollars because that's what the deal was and that's so amazing awesome thank you asami let's go for another round of applause because she deserves it thank you are your hands getting tired sorry Time check, you guys. We are down to the last minute. Less than a minute. What are you going to do? Complete it. Refine it. Work it. <laughs> I just came up with that. Patting myself on the back. I didn't actually get back there. There we go. All right. 
Okay, so I'm curious in this last 37 seconds, does anybody have an idea in the audience of what they would do for this prompt, with this prompt for their pitch? Anybody been thinking about it? Let's hear it, Juliana. Did I get that right? Did I get your name right? <laughs> yes. All right, what would you do? I would make a drone that caught celebrities doing stuff they had no business doing. And then it would play dramatic music. <laughs> and then, and so where does the journalism come in? Well, I thought that, <laughs> I thought journal journalism, like they write articles about it and then on the article they would have the video featuring it. All right, so like paparazzi drones, yeah. like meets TMZ. All right, all right. That's super fun. Thank you for your idea. Oh, are we at, are, did we get down on the time clock? Whoa! That 30 seconds goes by so fast. Time is up, you guys. Time is up. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. So, this next portion is the pitching and then the judging. Each team will get five minutes, no more than five minutes, to present their pitch. Judges, you, after each presentation, you will get a little bit of time for one, maybe two clarifying questions, if you have them. And then you will get some time to judge and decide the winner. Team one, are you guys ready? All right. Do you want this cordless mic or... Do you feel more comfortable with a cord? No cord. All right. So I just wiped off my lipstick. Don't worry. Um, you, can't, you have to talk kind of close to it, okay? Hi, guys. We're the Leaf Peepers. <laughs> and we're going to talk to you about our idea. We're going to... Our company we decided to think of is Eagle Eye Drones. So what we do is customize and lease out drones that we... Customized to go into war zones and other areas to get the reporting out to people and get aerial photos and other things in war zones like Libya or places that are unsafe for journalism so journalists to go to, like North Korea. We use our vinyl sheets to cut to customize it to the terrain so it can be able to be camouflaged. And I'm gonna hand it off. So. What we have in mind for our target markets is two primary ones. Sorry. Uh, the first one would be news organizations, especially uh, military-based journalism is you know, very significant, uh, understanding different conflicts around the world. Uh, also, with example, North Korea, where restricted government access to information. So in those instances, we're going to be, the news organizations will be utilizing our products. The second uh, biggest uh, market we're looking for is uh, other drone companies. Since we have the sort of corner of the market on the camouflage business, they'll send in their regular drones, and we can, if they want, we can add the, you know, the camouflage wrap to them, and they can obviously resell them in the market at a premium. Uh, more importantly is, in addition to the actual drone, leasing out the drone itself, uh, we also have utilizing the uh, video and pictures from the drones, and we can also sell those as a separate product to news, you know, to news organizations. You know, just like they have their dedicated photographers, they, we, we're, we serve that function as well in perilous environments. We'll, we'll take the boat pictures and then we'll say, hey, we have a picture, buy it from us so you can have a nice article. Um, now I'm going to hand off to the business model. All right, so as he mentioned, uh, we have two revenue streams. One will be leasing the drones on con contract basis, and the price for that will be $300 per month. And the second source of revenue will be actually owning the content that we shoot, right? So we are leasing the drones, but we own the proprietary rights to the videos that we shoot. So selling them to uh, companies like uh, other new sources will also be a major source of revenue for us. Uh, the, the plan for reaching the target market is actually making a proof, proof of concept first. And with, with the help of early adopters, uh, demonstrating the value by going uh, to say, for example, Libya, the, the really bad slave trade that's happening right now, and be able to uh, get like, really good news that other uh, news organizations are not able to. And after that, we are going to just use like, uh, cold calling and stuff and get leads and generate sales through that. Um, well, uh, that's it. Thank you. All right. Great job, guys. Do you, judges, yes, clap, yes. It's all about applause. Do you guys have any clarifying questions? 
for our first presentation? Here, we have a special mic just for you. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah, so can you clarify on, are you guys leasing the drones to the news companies? Like, how does that work? Like, because you're talking about owning the content, would the news company actually want you to own the content if they're the ones that are, like who's operating the drones and all of that? Okay, so our plan, uh, our plan to tackle that is offering the news companies that actually lease with us, having the first right to the news, right? Because that is where they make most of their money. But la later on, we, uh, the, we own we own the eventual rights. So say, say we'll have like a 48 hour period after which uh, the videos will be open source. I mean, we, we, we have the rights to sell it. So the co contract will have a clause such that we'll able to do that. They can report live, but we can like sell the content later on. Okay, great. Any more clarifying questions? Cool. Team two, it's you. Y'all ready? All right. Who wants the mic first? Yeah, you want to pick it? Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, s all right. So basically, the drone that we're trying to create is named Drone 60 361 because we're trying to cover every single part of the world with every single field as, as much as we can. So the main, the, the main goal of our, or the main logo of our company is information empowers those stricken by misfortune, like health, bad health, being born in a, in a, in a country that's going with civil war, really poor country who don't have access to clean water, to good information, and stuff like that. All right, so let me introduce myself. My name is Subrath, and here you go. I'm, I'm Dev. And I'm Whitney. OK, so the design that we have, it's a drone with, with vinyl sheets on four sides. And we have a projector in the middle, so it could display the information. It could project. It acts as a screen, so you could just display the information to the vinyl sheets from the projector. And this is how it works. So it has like a 360 degree view with vinyl seats on all four sides. And it can be re relocated at any instant. It's really cost effective. We're using really cheap stuff like vinyl sheets, which saves a lot of money. And it can be used in like all, all parts of the world, even the poorest of the poorest countries. And can be used for a lot of different stuff. So let me give this to Whitney now. Okay, so when we think about drones, we usually think of them used in warfare. So what we decided to do is we want to use the drones to promote healthcare in the third world countries. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the vinyl sheets to project um, health resources such as how to get vaccine for certain diseases. We can use this to educate the people. So they'll be flying around in the air and then as the people will look up in the sky, they can see information being processed through the drones. Um, also, we want to use it just to promote, like, if, say if we're having a clinical within their country, we can give them information of the time, where, and when to come so they can get their vaccines and more information about diseases around the world. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about the more um, application aspect of this. Um, so a lot of times drones have a bad reputation for uh, being used for surveillance. I mean, even if you use it for journalism, there's a really big negative side to it. No one likes a drone flying around their home. It's, it's like, it's like an instant negative. And uh, a lot of time, drones have always been associ associated with drone strikes. We're gonna, we wanna change all of that. We wanna use, because that's a system that has so much potential. We wanna use it to deliver information, resources, and we want to empower those people in third world countries or in terrorist stricken zones because they might not have access to internet. Guess what? We'll get them. The inf we'll get the information to them. We'll get the information to them. So, what we do is every time there's volunteer or volunteering organizations, Red Cross or any other uh, ones, we direct the people towards where they are. Also, every time there's a volunteer somewhere in a third world country or in a terrorist uh, stricken zone. There's always a danger to their lives. With drones, we can help uh, 
we can help stop that to some degree because a person does not need to be physically there to actually deliver the information, the drone can. You don't have to have any infrastructure, any property, you don't have to buy a screen or, a, or any kind of board to actually deliver the information at all. So yeah, uh, we have three big concepts. First is news delivery, second is healthcare, and third is safe havens. We want, we want people to feel safe. We want them to know what to do when there's a crisis. Right. And yeah, this is our goal. We want to save lives at both ends. People who are stricken with misfortune and people who want to save them. Good job, guys. Great job. Judges, any clarifying questions? It's all right if you don't have. All right, here. Oh, sorry. I'm making a mess of your pen and paper. So in some of these countries that I'm assuming you're referring to, there's um, a problem with information access already, gatekeeping to quality vetted information. How, who's going to be the gatekeeper for the, the drones and information sharing in this way? How do you ensure that um, you're sharing quality information and that, uh, yeah, just kind of that... Okay, so we are right now, it's not showing like the news, that fake news that's all over the social media right now. Our main target is to make people aware about how to prevent diseases, like how to keep water clean, how to, keep, how, how to have a healthy sanitation, how to, how to wash your clothes properly, how to wash your food properly before cooking, how, how, how can you purify your water, how can you take care of your children. That's our main focus. We want to target specifically on healthcare just because people die just because of fever or diarrhea, just because they don't have access to good information about how to prevent those diseases. If, if, if it's getting really hot, we could, we could advertise about using mosquito nets to, to prevent from malaria and other kinds of diseases, which is like a leading cause of the, in, in Africa and the really poor countries in Asia too. So our main goal is not to politicize, to, to display the political news, but how could people benefit from the healthcare and just provide the general information, not, uh, not, sup not supporting any kind of party, not displaying what's happening all over the world, just how can they be safe, because that's our main goal. Yeah, I just wanted to focus on the fact that we're not, we don't care about political news or more about like any, any kind of bias. It's more about factual information about how to, for healthcare practices, how to keep yourself clean, what to avoid to avoid a particular disease, or where can you find a, a resource that you might need in that situation. So yeah, we, we want to avoid the whole bias uh, situation over there. Yeah. I believe we have a question from the audience and former participant. Hi. Hey. So in the beginning, you mentioned that you want to be everywhere in the world. Uh, how do you plan on doing that? And what are your cost analysis, you know, making those drones happen in that way? All right, so since our drone is made of vinyl sheets, a, a regular projector, and a regular drone, if we produce, if we are able to produce in a mass market, we could produce a lot of them because we're using a lot of cost efficient stuff and we're not using any kind of special stuff, any kind of special expensive stuff. So, as a reason, we're trying to use it as much as we can in a, lo a lot of countries in Africa so that there will be one central office in the city and they're going to regulate what's happening around five or six, six surrounding villages and we are not here to make money we don't want to make money we just want to provide because making money the best the best way you could become a billionaire is to save people's life and if you're able to save people's life by at least saving a hundred people within a year or like a thousand people all over africa or asia then that's more than being a billionaire or a trillionaire thanks Sure. So the, the company that came up with the idea of a seed belt chose not to sell it. They didn't choose to patent it. They gave it out. That's what we want to do. We, we don't want to sell on an idea that can actually help save a lot of people. Might as well give it out to a lot of organizations like Red Cross or the other volunteering organizations out there. You know, they could probably use it for a good cause. There's, yeah, there's no room for making money here. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. 
Yes, common pheasants, you are up. Team three. What'll it be? <laughs> Who wants the mic? Ready? Okay. Breaking news. This Justin from UTA Libraries. <laughs> you can run, you can hide, but you can't get away during finals week. During finals week, you're going to be isolated, studying in a small corner of that house that you never knew existed. How are you going to get the news from across campus, or in fact, across the world? Well, don't worry. We have brave journalists that take that under their lives, and they go right out to the world and do it. But now, they don't have to. All right, so for our presentation, just go back to the first slide. Go back to the first slide. Yeah, so the name of our uh, group is Poda News. So what we're going to do is, in war zones, you basically know that it's really hard for the journalists to go there and take photos and everything. So what we are thinking as is we can have drones and we can use the vinyl wraps for camouflaging the road drones according to the environment. So that it, it's easier for the journalist to get the photos and get the footage from war, war places. Also, and uh, for a backup, we also think that when the drones take the photos, we can use them and print them on vinyl wraps and have it as a backup at a place near the war zone, so even if the drone is shot down or something bad happens with the drone, you can have the backup images. And we also think that we can use a 360 degree camera on the drones to get, to get better footage of the war zone so that you have better photos and better content for, uh, for the journalist. Yeah, so now Rahul will go over the statistics. All right, uh, so. Here's the, here's the main part of our Porta news. Like, you, anyone can easily hack the drone or shoot it down, right? You send it in a war zone and a terrorist just shot it down. What do you do now? So, or a terrorist, some uh, group just hacks it. So that's the whole point, because you cannot hack a hard copy. So our point is to get that information. Now, let's say CNN has a journalist far away from war zone. He just sent a drone. Now what the drone will do, capture the images and the information, get it to a nearby journalist who's nearby war zone, go to him and print the documents. So that even if the data is hacked, the photos and the information is safe in a hard format. So that's the whole plan. And that's the main part of our portal news. Now, let's go, let's go on some stats. But, uh, by 1990, from 1992 till today, 1,262 journalists were killed. Now, why do they, why do they have to get killed or, you know, why do they have to get killed for doing something they want to do or for doing it for people? And that's why Porta News is here. A journalist doesn't have to physically go there. He just has to send the drones. Now, the information which the drones capture is very crucial. So it has, uh, so as we said, the vinyl wraps, it'll camouflage it. Now, why vinyl wraps? Why not just the traditional techniques, right? Like even today we have the camouflage drones. There's nothing new. But drone industry is a $12 billion industry. Now, in that $12 billion, $10 billion are used by the military. And this is not me saying, this is, uh, this is according to Forbes. Now, the camouflaging cost, the, only, the camouflaging cost of, a drone, like of all the drones in the military is $4.7 billion. That's approximately $1,000 per drone. Now, spending $1,000 just to camouflage a drone, we can't afford it, taxpayers can't afford it. Now, that's why vinyl wraps are there. You know, vinyl wraps, if like the way we calculated it, it's 60% cheaper. You can camouflage an entire drone through techniques in, a, in $400 as compared to $1,000. Now, as far as profit making goes, like we are in an industry where we have to make profit, right? We cannot just give drones in a $12 billion industry. No one is gonna give us $12 billion. We have to make profit. We can't afford to do non-profit. Now that's the whole point. If we tap in that $10 billion industry through our camouflage drones and Porta News, we can we can provide it for cheaper to military and save our money and save the journalists at the same time. And that's the whole point of Porta News, to save journalists, save taxpayers money by getting it at much cheaper cost because we are going to wrap it and deliver the information safe. It's unhackable, it's unstoppable, it's news portable. Thank you. Great job, guys. Just under 30 seconds left. 
Judges, any clarifying questions for Porta News? Common pheasants? It's all right if you don't. All right. Great job, guys. Do you, can you ask a question to them? I don't see why not. Well, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Uh, so you said that you'll remotely transfer the data to the nearby zone, right? I'm wondering where will you get wireless internet in war zones like North Korea or Libya? So have you heard of Facebook uh, projecting the data from its uh, drones? So now that technology is working even in the rem uh, remotest part of Africa and Somalia. In the next few years, you won't even need the wireless to project the internet. Yeah, so Facebook is projecting internet from its drones, like no wire, nothing. You know, 100, 100 Gbps speed, like NASA right now uses that much speed for its normal operations. Facebook is projecting that much speed just through its drones. So that's the future. Drone is the future, and that's how you can project internet even in the remotest part, and that's what they want to do. So. Wow, awesome. Thanks, guys. Round of applause for the common pheasants. Great job. All right, so the next five minutes is for you all to judge and decide the winner, so I'll leave you to it. Yeah, we'll do a reintroduction of this information board over here. If you want to vote, if you've been paying attention and want to vote from your devices, please do. You can vote at libguides.uta.edu slash poll, pow slash poll. Let me say that again. libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. And once again, if there is a tie amongst the judges, the poll will decide the winner. Exciting. Have you guys voted? Did you vote? Rock the vote, you guys. Rock the POW vote. Did y'all vote? Libguides.uta.edu slash POW slash poll. Oh, there's apparently an ad that looks like a submit button. That is not the submit button. Don't be deceived by internet advertising tomfoolery. I just wanted to say tomfoolery. <laughs> free pulling up. Ain't no free lunch. Ain't no free lunch in life on the internet. There is a submit button. What's it going to be? Who is gonna be the winner? I wrote that. I wrote that song. I'm a composer on my off time. <laughs> Judges are in suspenseful conversation over who might be the winner. All right, so libguides at UTD slash pals. Oh, no S on poll. Bam! We got another voter. Are you voting Facebook Live? Hi! If you're watching, Mom, hi! What's it gonna be? Boo, 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 boo. boo, boo. Got a question from the audience. For voting, libguides.uta.edu slash pow. Libguides. It's actually right here. Libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. You're welcome. Wow. Judges are still conversing. We're two, we've got two minutes left. The suspense is killing me. Strumming my pain with his fingers. Singing my life with just a little musical break. His words. Two time, two time. Killing me softly with the vote. 
<laughs> Killing me slowly. Who's gonna win? Telling my whole life with his words. Come on, join me. Killing me softly. Lenny's got it. With his own. Bam, 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 bam. Whoa. <laughs> Can you tell we don't have anything planned for this portion? <laughs> Sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Judges, are we close to a decision? All right, getting closer. This is exciting that there's so much deliberation. That means there was excellent work done today. Excellent work done all month. And we will be back for the spring edition of POW. And it's gonna be in April, April 2018. Mark your calendars. Was, is it going to be Thursdays again? All right. So if you want to participate, our guessers out here in the audience. Oh, our other guesser went away. Uh, you can sign up here on the table up here by the popcorn that is no longer. And you can sign up in advance for April 2018. Pow. We'll sign up to get notified. To get notified. Right, well, just still, you're getting involved. It's semantics, Martin. Um, I think I, I realized that I didn't announce that. These guys all know it, but if you want to participate in the future, there's a financial incentive involved. And for participating in the preliminary rounds, you get a $10 gift certificate of your choice. You get a list to choose from that includes Amazon, Starbucks, Einstein Bros., um, printing services, Maker Shed, and that's it. But that's a pretty good list, right? And uh, today, all of our finalists get a $20, well, the two non-winning teams will get a $20 gift certificate, and the winning team will get a $50 gift certificate on top of that $10 one. So, oh, just kidding. That misinformation, fake news. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> it's not on top, but you get, if you win, you get a 50. You get a 5-0. I'm, I'm 50. I like, I like to kick. I like to stretch. Anyone know what that's from? I'm 50. Thank you. <laughs> Was that my bearded friend over here? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sometimes I age myself with my references, and I'm okay with that. Do we have a winner? A clear winner from the judges? Or do we have a tie? Can we ask a clarifying question? One clarifying question? All right. We have one. We, they're unsure. One clarifying question from Michelle Reed. We had a question for team two again. So we were thinking we really like your project. Um, we're wondering how closely it is connected to journalism. It sounds a bit more like public health as a discipline. So could you speak a little bit more to that direct connection to the discipline that you were assigned? OK, so what we what, when defining journalism, it's just a way of sharing information. So it's not like particular, like in New York Times or Washington Post, that's, that's you, that you're publicizing the political events that's happening in the world. We are just trying to share information. So it's not just political stuff. We're not doing political stuff. We're here to save lives. And journalism as a whole, we are trying to relate that with sharing information, not uh, not particularly with the, with the regular journalism that we, you, we all think about, like news, newspapers, stuff like that. We're just trying to, it's, it's a way of communicating with people and just sharing the information that's helpful and beneficial. Okay. Does that help define your answer? Oh, the suspense is just really good, like, wait. 30 seconds. We've never had a call this close or judges this unsure of who will be the winner 
of the final round of POW. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Welcome. It's a very spiffy three-piece suit. Well done. How's that gonna be? Do we get, oh, you've already gotten the vote out? Okay, all right, all right. So we know what the audience thinks. Oh, you can, you can look at the screen. If you wanna zoom in, Justin, on that screen, that's what the audience vote is. Oh, Martin just took it away. I think he's going to re-tally. Never mind. Sorry about that. Are you guys feeling like the suspense? You can cut the suspense with a knife? Have you already chosen what you're going to use your gift certificate money for? Christmas gifts, Amazon. Chair. They're, they're, they want to tell you that they're going to give their, their winnings to charity. Are you, are you ready? All right. So we do have, this is the first time in POW history that we have an undecided tie vote amongst the judges. And therefore, the winning team will be decided by the audience vote. Well, you already have the audience vote. So, the winner of the final round of POW for the fall semester of 2017 is Team Two, the Fearless Scarecrows. Great job, guys. Yes. Great job, guys. So, judges, do you want to talk about um, how, how you went about your decision-making process or what you guys were just grappling with? And um, also take uh, the opportunity to give some feedback to our winning team and participating teams. So, we were, we were tied between team one and team two. Um, team two, we, were, we love your concept. I mean, it's great. You didn't quite stick to the prompt though, because the the idea is journalism as the as the discipline, and we heard your definition of it. But I guess we have a journalist major, journalism major in our group, and and I guess if you if you wouldn't mind sharing what journalism is um, <laughs> for that. But anyway, so the point is that it's just a, a difference in in opinion as far as like what journalism is. But your idea overall is great. Um, the one comment that I have personally to you guys is that awesome idea. You might want to think about not a non-profit route, but more of a social enterprise route. And the reason why that is, is because any idea that you have, you want it to be sustainable on its own, right? So you don't want to be dependent on an outside source of income to where now you can't take your idea and, and take it as far as it can go. But if you can make it a social enterprise model where it's sustainable and, and you can make money, but you can just roll that profit back into the, the operations of the business, and then you don't have to worry about trying to beg money from different organizations. So it's so like, think Tom shoes, right? You buy a pair, you give a pair. And so that you're doing good, but you're also earning money at the same time. All right, and then team one, uh, you guys were awesome. You stuck to all of the prompts and whatnot. Um, we just, it wasn't as creative as, as team two, but that doesn't say it wasn't good, right? So it was good, but I think you could have taken that idea a little bit further. And, and for me personally, I wasn't quite clear on your monetization model as far as, you know, how would you make money, but also the content rights, because news organizations are crazy about they owning that content and they don't want anybody else to have that content. So you guys might have some problems with that when you negotiate with them. Okay. okay. Any other feedback from either one of our other judges? You guys, all of our participating teams did great, great work today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating. I hope you continue to participate with us in the future. Team two, the Fearless Scarecrows, congratulations on winning and Thank you, everybody, for being with us. Join us in April of 2018. My name's Tessa White. Same time, same place, 2018. Bye.